All right, so the first thing we're going to go over today is the rectangular coordinate system. This is in lesson three of the book. Um, so you can follow along in the book if you want to. The rectangular coordinate system, otherwise known as the Cartesian coordinate system. Yeah, we've talked about that a little bit last week as well, but we're going to go into it in more detail today. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to look at an actual setup of how this works. Um, right here is like a typical layout of how we have a table with a ball screw that comes through here and a motor that drives it. So the next few slides will just kind of show that. So we have the drive motor, ball screw, and when the motor moves or rotates, it then moves the ball screw and the table will move back and forth. Now, one thing you'll notice right away is that our X is going in a negative direction, X negative, but it's actually in a right-hand motion. So when you look at this, you're going to think to yourself, well, um, that should actually be positive. But remember last week how we talked about we should always think about what the tool is doing. In this case, we don't have a tool to look at here. But if the table were moving to the right, the tool would be moving to the left, which would be a negative motion. So keep that in mind. For now, just kind of um, think about how the tool is going to be reacting to the table motion. There's a little animation of the table moving this way. And then if it would reverse direction, we will see that it goes the other way. Pretty obvious, but it says X positive even though the table is moving to the left because the tool would be moving to the right. What a wonderful animation. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to keep going. Now, um, talks about there being trouble with the question here of asking how far is an inch, right? So we look here, here's an inch. How does this table know that it's moved an actual inch? Um, in the old days, it would actually take the amounts of threads per inch on this screw, and it would have to know that, and then it could move depending on one rotation, however many threads per inch it was. So if we looked at it here, uh, they just say the same thing in the early days of NC. That's what um, the programmer would have to know this. Nowadays, you don't need to know that. We're just going to look at what a typical rectangular coordinate system um, will actually look like. We're going to use an analogy first off. So we're going to make a graph that will explain this a little bit better. Our graph's going to be more of a business-like graph, and then we're going to make it into a Cartesian coordinate system graph. So here you'll see that um, we have a graph. We have baselines on either side, and we have uh, linear x and y's. Down the bottom here, uh, we're going to put in one type, and up the side we're going to put in another type. So down here we might do years or months or whatever, and on the side here you'd have some other sort of measurement. So on this one it's productivity for last year. We have a baseline. It's our horizontal baseline. That's called time. In the time we're going to have uh, 12 months. So we put in here January, February, all the way through December. And then on the side over here, we're going to have productivity. So we have productivity, and we're going to have from 0% all the way up to 100% productive. Obviously, you're never going to be 0%, you're never going to be 100%, but you'll have something in between there. Goes on up. 100%. All right, so our range is 0 to 100 now we're going to plot points on here for productivity throughout the year. So if we look here, where these two baselines meet is called our origin. Ours will be called origin, origin or program zero or work offset, something different at the time, but it'll always be called your origin where they meet. Anything to the right hand side of that origin is a positive motion, and anything above the origin here is a positive motion. So we're going to be working positive positive of our Cartesian coordinate system or in our graph. So we get a list of points that we're going to work with. January they were 90 percent productive, February 80 percent productive and so on. So we're going to take all these points we're going to say okay January, February, March, whatever and then we're going to take the productivity and we're going to plot them on here. 
So in the first month, we were January, 90% productive. February, 80% productive. And so on and so forth as we plot through here. Now, right here you'll see that each one of these points, or this point in particular, is called a coordinate. So each one of these is a coordinate on this uh, graph. In the, uh, for this particular coordinate, it's March at 60%, right here. And when you connect all of these coordinates, you get a visual representation of what's going on. So there's a productivity chart, but it works the same way as a Cartesian coordinate system for our G-code. So let's just, instead of this being a productivity chart, we're going to look at it like it's an XY plane with Cartesian coordinate systems. So let's look at it here. We're going to change this to an XY plane instead of productivity. Down below we're going to make our bottom baseline an x-axis with 0, 1 inch, 2 inch, 3 inch, and so on all the way over. And then our side over here, we're going to make this into a y-axis and we're going to put our numbers all the way up. And in our corner, you're going to see we have our program 0, or it's also called origin as well, but it's at 0, 0. That's where all our numbers are going to be based off of. Now our first point here, we'll see is at x0, right on this baseline. So x is 0, y is 9 inches, so we go up 9 points to here, and we plot the point. Second point, x is over at 1, our y is up at 8. Next point, x is over at 2, y is up at 6, and so on and so forth across this graph. So see as we go across, each one of these coordinates changes until we get to the end. Alright, so all these points as you look are relative to the actual origin or the program point. Um, what that means is that these are all absolute numbers. We'll get into absolute incremental a little bit later, but for now you'll see that they're all relative to this. All right, so our origin point, when we look at it in that graph, is just a nice two-dimensional look. But a CNC, you got to remember, is three axis. So they're going to be working with a third axis. We looked at the X and Y, but we're also going to add in now a Z. So we have a z-axis. Up and down is our z-axis. So when we have our points here, we're going to have our grid over in this area, but we also have z. We need the z so that we don't crash into the part. We need to be able to go over the part, and we need to go down into the part. So anything up in the y is a positive, anything over to the right in the x is a positive, and anything up off of the part is a positive in the z. Z is pretty simple. Away from the part is positive, down into the part, or removing material is negative. And you'll see the other opposite ends of the polarity system over here. So X positive, X negative, Y positive, Y negative, and Z positive, Z negative. We'll put a part on here so you can see it. <clears throat> but I guess before we do that, let's actually show you um, more of a grid on here. We're going to see increments of an inch. So here we have some increments here, and they're of an inch. So if you zoomed in on this, it would look like an inch here. Um, obviously, this doesn't look quite like that, but that's what we're assuming. Now, if we look at it here, um, we're looking in the fact that if we're doing inch mode, we can go up four decimal places. So we can be accurate to within tenths. So you'll see here we can be accurate to within tenths. Now, if we were in the metric mode, and we had so many millimeters, we're going to go and only be accurate to within three places out here, which is a micron, and you'll see 0 .001 millimeters, or one micron. Again, we're not going to work much in the metric system, so we'll just keep it simple and just worry about our inch system. So we're going to place a part in here. Here's our part. Obviously things aren't quite square if you look at this edge here. It's a little bit rounded down and everything, but you know, you get the point. Uh, the top of the part right here, it's the top of our part, is at 
z0 and then we're going to have the Cartesian coordinate system off we, so we could plot points out on here and then z up is positive and then if we go into the part it would be z negative so let's look at just some g-code we're just going to do some simple g-code again you haven't learned it yet but we're going to look at some on the screen here and we'll see a typical uh, motion of a tool so here's some code we have a g00 x1 y1 z point one notice how they have decimal places in them because they're actual um, locations feed rates also have a decimal point in them now in this case what we're going to do is go over to a certain point rapiding and then we're going to do a feed motion down into our part so it looks like we're going to be using a spot drill and putting some spotted holes in here we're going a half inch deep maybe we're actually drilling a hole for going a half inch deep so we get a tool and our point at this here it wrapped it over from the machine zero to this point so this point is x1 y1 z point one so wrap it over here all in one motion now in the next motion it's going to actually feed a G1 as a linear motion to a quarter inch deep at a feet of five inches. So it goes down and you'll see it feeding down here. So it went down the quarter inch. The next motion is going to tell it just to wrap it, G00, up to Z.1. So it's just going to move the tool straight up to here. So let's see if it does it. Oh, sure enough, look at that. All the way up. So we're going to go a little bit further down the code. So far you don't see it down here, but we're going to go a little bit further down. We're going to go to x2 inches, so it's going to move over. So you see x2 inches, so it moved over to 2 inches. It's now going to do another linear motion and drill down in a quarter inch here. So it feeds down in and it drills a quarter inch deep. Notice how we didn't have to put a feed rate on this line of motion because it was up in the previous line and a feed rate is modal so that stays in effect so it would still doesn't have to be changed unless uh, we were to change the feed rate to maybe 5.1 or 6 or something and we're going to wrap it back up to z.1 to there so we've used the Cartesian coordinate system here we're doing the x y and z we came to a few points, went to this point, drilled down, went up, went over to this point, drilled down, went up. So that's the end of this little portion. Um, our next little video will be on polarity.